Okay, so good afternoon everyone. So my name is Eugene. So his name is Franco. Kuya Eugene and also Kuya Frank. Welcome to our Ferrari. <laughs> so we're going right now to the old city of Manila using the Ferrari. So the first site that we're going is the Port Santiago. The Ferrari is just on you for uh, for the proper uh, for the just uh, for the kidding pan or they call it the kalesa. That's the kidding name. <laughs> Ferrari. There's a lot of Kalesa types or the carriage types. This type is they call the Tartanilla. The Kalesa type is the two persons inside behind the driver. And there's a Caritela type, there's a two, uh, two by two seaters. They have a maximum of five persons. But this Tartanilla type, it's a maximum of seven persons. And there's another type of the, like a grand carriage that they call the Carvae. Okay, so this is the Port Santiago. <laughs> it's a Port Santiago. This is only an island before the Spanish came here in the Philippines. So the island that they called, they used to call it as Alum. You know also the Alum is a... In English of Alum is Delta. And the Delta is a triangular ship in the map that where the water is mixed. And the mixtures of the waters is in the part of south here in Manila. It's a Manila Bay. And Manila Bay they called a salty water or a salted water that they called too big Alat. While in the part of north, it's a river, a river that they call Ilog. So uh, this is an alat and this is Ilog. So the water is mixed in the area, so that's why the island they call Alog. So, okay, so if you are live, if you are living to the place of Alog, they will call you from Alog or Taga Alog. So Taga Alog, because of the mixtures of the water, they form Tagalog. And the intramuros is a Latin word. The two words of intramuros, the intra it means inside and the muros it means the wall. Or within the walls, intramuros. So this is, this was only a Manila. So if you go outside of uh, intramuros, they called extramuros. So it means um, you're in the province. So if you go outside today, if you go outside today here at um, intramuros, you're in Metro Manila because this is only a Manila. So, the Port Santiago, the, the state power of the government, they used to stay here or they used to call as Palacio del Gobernador. Or today, they called Malacanang Palace. They stay here first in 1571 before they move outside of the wall, outside of the area of Port Santiago. Okay, so where our national hero was um, was imprisoned for 56 days inside the, the Port Santiago. Actually, there's a museum sites today. Uh, there's a two prison cells for Dr. Jose Rizal before the execution area. Ah, uh, before the execution. So the execution area, he was walked here in the start of Port Santiago up to Bagumbayan. And anyway, the Bagumbayan, where they start? When the, when the area of the Tagalog was defied by the Spaniards in 1571, a lot of Tagalogs, they moved in the other shore or in the other islands. And the islands that they called Bagumbayan or a new city. Or they used to call those, uh, they called also Luneta. Luneta, it's a, Lunet, it's a Latin word, which it means uh, it's shaped like a lunar in the map. So that's why they called Lunet. 
or today as a dedicated uh, from the national hero of the Philippines Jose Rizal they called Rizal Park Let's go in the other side. Let's go in the front of the church. The Church of Manila Cathedral. I hit the horse the horse will know that I, uh, that I have a command for him I don't want to hit harder <laughs> it's a cruelty on that way to see the Bahay Chinoy because this is the way going to Bahay Chinoy or the Chinese museum Okay, so welcome here in the front of Manila Cathedral Church. Actually, Manila Cathedral Church is the second oldest stone church in the Philippines. That it was built in 1571. And on this site, there's a seven times destroyed from the different types of calamities. First from fire, typhoon, four times in the earthquakes, then last during the second war. The Liberation Battle of Manila. That's 1945, American against the Japanese. So the eighth version of this church to rebuild there's a contributions came from Japan, America, Spain, and Philippines. And it was here around 1953 up to 1958. So today, the 8th version is there's an underground cemetery. Just like a catacombs in Rome. And only for the highest priest here in the Philippines. Or only for the cardinals. So in the front of the church, there's a plaza. The plaza that they used to call as Plaza de Toro. Because they do a bullfighting here during the Spanish period and then in 1797 they turned into the park and the park they used to call as Plaza Mayor or one of the major plaza when the American was here 1901 they changed again the name from the plaza and they dedicated to the US President William McKinley so that's why they, that's why they used to call as Plaza McKinley after the World War, it was destroyed. And then, they changed again the name from Plaza de Roma. Why they called Plaza de Roma? Because they dedicated the name from the Cardinals in Rome. So that's why they called Plaza de Roma. So, always you will see like a, like a pattern like this. If there's a church, there's, there's always be a plaza. Church, plaza. And side by side, there's a two government office. Like as you said, on the white building, that is the Ayuntamiento. Ayuntamiento or the town hall here in Manila. Ayuntamiento de Manila. Ayuntamiento, it means the city hall. Or the mayor's office. Also destroyed during the second, uh, from the different types of calamities. Especially during the second war. Inside only was destroyed. Outside is just only a facade. So they built, they, did, they don't want to destroy the facade 
they use it like a building inside the building just like that so today the building they use as a bureau of the treasury Put in an article PD1616 that if you want to build a building, only Spanish ambience because you're in the heritage. That's fucking toilet people. The governor, 1690 up to 1863 because they moved in the sites of Malacanang Palace. So why they call the Malacanang Palace? Because of the words of Nagma Malacaya. Nagma Malacaya it means that is the deep language of the Filipino that they call the Mangingista or the fisherman. So they do the trading at the site of uh, the palace. So that's why they called it Malacanya. Because they do the Malacaya or the Malacanya. So that's why they called Malacanya Palace. Exhibit, there's a footstep mark in this place. The footstep mark. It's the only for exhibit, ah. Going outside on the gates, the small gate that they call the postigo, because if you say the big gate, they call puerta. So that is the posti. They call postigo del palacio. That all uh, that gate is they use only for the high in the highest position. Who lives also in the Palacio del Gobernador and on the church. And also they used that gate by our national hero going to the execution area at Bagumbayan. of the cements what is inside the cements of Manila Cathedral because this uh, during the second war it's not destroyed during the second war totally destroyed they just covered it they just covered by cements because the Manila Cathedral Church was built also using the adobe and the adobe is like a volcanic ash or volcanic top with a mix of egg white so they form like a clay and they form like a bricks and the bricks they call adobe and to flatten they use a uh, red a red bricks or like a mortar too. The big square or the big part in the front of the church they call plaza. But here there's a small square or a, a small part 
that they called Plazuela. Plaza is a big, Plazuela is a small one. So why they call the Plazuela de Santa Isabel? Because on the right side, this parking lot, it was used to be as a school in 1632 until 1945. But that's only for the female school. They called Coleillo de Santa Isabel. After they destroyed during the second war, they moved outside of the wall at Top Avenue. So that's why they called Plazuela de Santa Isabel. And that monument, that is the memorial for the 100,000 innocent victims who has died during the Second War. Men, women, infants, children. That was killed during the time. And on the right side, this is the office of the highest priest here in the Philippines, Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines. The office of the new cardinal, Cardinal Jose, ah, Jose Cardinal Advincula. His nickname is Joe. So he called Cardinal Joe. In short, Card Joe. Okay. On the left side, this is the Casa Manila or house in Manila. So it was built, uh, this establishment was built in 1981 under by Imelda Marcos. They called Casa Manila. Huh? This just, it's just only a replica. Because the original one in 1880 at Calia Boneros in Chinatown. That were the nine rich family lips during the time. And the servants is all are Chinese. So they made a replica here. They use as a museum that where you can find a lot of antiques back then. And there's a wedding reception area, there's a hotel that they called the White Knight Hotel, the restaurant that they called the Barbara's restaurant. And also there's an office for the bikes. The bamboo bike. They provide tours for rent, for sale, and shipping also. And as you'll see also in the street, there's a stones, the stones that they call the cobblestone. Only a few streets ahead because a lot of them was destroyed during the Second War. And the cobblestone came from Spain. While on the other side, the white cobblestone is they call the piedra china or a granite stone. It came from China. They made a decorative ballast for the ship of the Chinese if there's a business here in the Philippines. Or like in the Kalyan trade. And there's a lot of tombstone, tombs they, that they engraved into the stone. So there's a few strips ahead of the cobblestone. Because the church is only the remain building who was survived from the bombing of Americans. And that is the oldest stone church in the Philippines that they call San Agustin Church. The church was uh, built in 1571. It's almost the same year but in the, not in the same month. So that's why it is the oldest one. So 1571, the founder of Manila when he was died in 1572, August 21, 1572, his name is Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. He buried inside the church and still inside, beside the altar. So in 1574, when the church, uh, when the Manila, when Manila was this was attacked by the Chinese pirates that they called that group is Limahong. The leader name is Lin Peng. They destroyed the Manila. They burned the Manila. When the Spanish wants to have a revenge here in the, at Intramuros, all of the Chinese pirates was moved out. So they renovate all of the buildings here during that time. In 1576, they restored the lot of buildings and the church was destroyed from an earthquake. Because they used to build from the Nipahat and Bamboo. It's almost the same structure in the first structure of the church. So the third church was built in 16th century using the adobe stones. There's no steels and cements. 
So since 16th century, the church has never been collapsed. But there's a lot of different types of calamities, like in the earthquakes. They got a lot of damages from 1863, also in 1880. And in 1880, the right bell tower was fell down. And the bell and the bell they put inside the church. And then the church, um, in 19, uh, they restored in 1900. So that's the structure from 1900. And in 1945, this is only the remaining building, as I said. They escaped from the bombing by the Americans because they've known that there's a lot of American soldiers or the prisoners inside of the church. So that's why they escaped. It's almost the same thing in Germany. And then, the church in 1972 was declared as one of the world heritage of UNESCO. One of the Baroque church here in the Philippines. And still, in the heritage, still UNESCO. And inside of the church, you will see also as the ceilings. The ceilings, it's, it looks like carvings, but it's a painting. It's only painted. There's a two Italian painter came here in the Philippines to paint the church. Their name is Cesar Averoni and Giovanni della Bella. That's from 18th century. And also, the chandeliers came from 18th century. In the other place. And we also have here the one of the nice restaurants at Intramuros. This is the Restaurante de la Mitre. And the Restaurante de la Mitre is managed by the nuns. One of the largest area inside the Intramuros is the, is, is the site of San Agustin. There's a 2.2 hectares. The largest one is the Port Santiago. So the part of San Agustin, um, a convent that it was destroyed during the Second War. Okay. All right, trouble. convent was destroyed during the second war today it's used as a wedding reception area and that wall is unstable so if you park your car park at your own risk <laughs> and there's a connecting bridge before going to the other establishment and the establishment they called today as ECJ building Eduardo Cojanco Jr. But during Spanish colonization, it was used to be as the house of the Augustinian priests. The house of the priests was destroyed from an earthquake. And in 1939, they built a new establishment again as a university. The Adamson University was destroyed during the war. And today, they use only as an offices. Building inside the building. Because that building, it was from 18th century. They use only as a facade. Well, on the other side, on the left side, there's a white tent during Spanish period. This is only for the orphans. But now, it's a one of the prestigious schools here in the Philippines that they called Ateneo de Manila. That it was from 1859. That's where our national hero was studying, Jose Rotacio Rizal. Last 2003, they used that site as an exhibit place. The slogan name of the Philippines they called Wow Philippines. And this under a construction building, it was used to be as a church in 1878. The church also destroyed. So today, they used the site as Museo de Intramuros. Where you can see a lot of the artifacts, like an old artifacts back then, while they do the preservation here at Intramuros.
Jesuit Church and the Jesuit School ang galang. Yes, only for an exhibit, there's a Bahay Kubo that they call the Nipahat and Bamboo. And that is the wall of Intramuros. So you'll see the original part of the wall if there's a bullet marks or bullet holes. If they don't have, it's just only renovated or restored in 1979. So we have here one of the original entrance gate that they call the Puerta de Santa Lucia. The Puerta de Santa Lucia, they use this gate by the Filipino the Filipino laborers because they do the forced laboring the forced laborers during that time 40 days without pay 16 to 60 years old male and female so that uh, that is they called the polo e servicio but if you had a lot of money or a lot of materials that you can trade or you can give them to the Spanish, you don't need to do the labors. So there's um, bridge, uh, a drawbridge that they close during that time as 11 o'clock and they open at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's just like a car PR. Inside these are the galleries of the Philippine presidents, or they called the Galleria de los Presidentes de la Republica Filipina. It starts from Emilio Aguinaldo, Manuel El Quezon, Jose P. Laurel, Sergio Osmeña, Manuel Rojas, Elpidio Quirino, Ramon Magsaysay, Carlos P. Garcia, Gustavo Macapagal, Ferdinand Marcos, Corazon Aquino, Fidel B. Ramos, Joseph Enercito Estrada, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, Binigno Aquino. So the current one, after the turn, they put the now into the ground. And on the right side area, 1901, they used to call it as a barracks of the Philippine Constabulary. 1905, they moved in Baguio. In Baguio, they changed the name from Philippine Constabulary Academy. 1916, they changed again the name as Philippine Military Academy. And Baguio is in the part of North. Maybe today there's a 14 degrees Celsius. They used to call those as quartel. Quartel it means a barang. And on the right side, this is the way going to the headquarters of U.S. General Douglas MacArthur. under reconstruction okay. and the white building they called the Beaterio de la Compañía de Jesus in 1684 it was used to be as a convent that were uh, where the founder of the religious of the Virgin Mary used to live here her name is Mother Ignacia del Espiritu Santo after they destroyed during the second war, they moved outside of the wall at Quezon City, at St. Mary's. 
So today the building they use as the Bagong Bayan Lights and Sounds Museum. The history about start of starting of Lapu Lapu, Magellan, up to Jose Rizal. While on the other side it was the house for the priest, the Jesuit compound. That where our national hero was adopted in this area. So when they destroyed, the establishment they put a university that they called PLM, Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. So maybe if they looking on the window, the nuns and the priests, they waving each other. So this is they call the Baluarte de San Diego. In 1585-87 they built the watchtower. And the watchtower was destroyed from an earthquake. Because they built in the sandy soil. That is uh, 18 feet high. Fifteen eighty five to eighty seven before they connect the walls in fifteen ninety up to eighteen forty. So it's two hundred fifty years. So up um, they used to have also an, as a headquarters in this place. But where you can see a beautiful view of the golf course area and there is a cannon that is the cannon of Japanese Japanese anti-aircraft cannon it was excavated and they found out in 1979 so the cannon was in at the Manila Bay So in the street, you'll see the name of Moralia. Moralia, it means a defense wall. So there's a lot of bullet marks because the shrapnels came from the bombing of America. On the right side, there's another gate. The gate that they call the Puerta Real or the Royal Gate, Royal Door. So during Japanese, uh, during Spanish period, this, the gate is only for the royal blood people, not only for the Spanish. And on the side by side, during Japanese period, they used as a prison cells. And today, it's a wedding reception area. Maybe it's almost the same thing. If you get in wed, you'll be in prison. <laughs> so they opened the six. They opened the six gates to preserve the original entrance gate of Pinconos. I would like to show you that where is the original gates came from. That's why they called also as a Puerta Real or uh, Rebellion de Bagong Bayan.
outside of the wall there's a golf course area during the Spanish period it was used to be a moat or a man-made river maybe the Spanish they want to build a monarchy and that's why they put for, uh, they put additional defense outside of the wall a man-made river and the man-made river was reclaimed by Americans and they put the golf course area also so that is the original gates of the Spanish Government office on the left side, the Department of Labor and Employment. They called Dole. It sounds like a pineapple and banana company. <laughs> on the left side, there's another establishment. This is the Manila Bulletin, a printing press for a newspaper. It was used to be as a church as well. And on the right side, it was used to be as a bomb proof arsenal for gunpowder. They're making a bullet. Inside the Intramuros, it feels like 50 meters up to 300 meters is there's a church. So we have a seven churches inside just to spread the Catholicism because the people who was living in the Philippines they worship for trees, mountains, rocks, animals and they called it animism sometimes they call it the paganism so when the Augustinians arrived in the Philippines a lot of the different types of orders like Augustinians, Jesuits, Dominicans, Franciscans, Caputins, Recollects they've spread the Catholicism going to Silice Silice is just over there it's in the middle of the street so we're just passing there and then going to Silice ah maybe later after the Bahay Pinoy we go back on the left side is the first public school here in Manila Manila High School 1906 and still operational and we have a hotel a hotel that they call the Bailiff it's owned by the family of the third president of the Philippines that they used to transfer in the Tagalog term of Laurel to build it. And up here, there's a 14 Spanish cannons but we're not allowed to go for today. On the left side, this is from Mapua University. The school that they used to call the Mapua Institute of Technology. Are they 
initial of MIT. Sounds like in Massachusetts. One of the best in engineering. It was used to be as a church, San Francisco Church, in 1602. side area it was used to be as a horse tables by the Spanish a prison cells by Japanese and after that they used as a small canteen for the students so when the pandemic hits the countries they close a lot of restaurants so there's, an, uh, there's a school here another side is another school Lyceum of the Philippines University and it was used to be as a church, ah, as a hospital in 1578 they called San Juan de Dios Hospital And we have another gate because we have a seven gate here at Nintendo. So this gate they use only by the by the Chinese. Or it used that there's a small Chinatown who was living in the suburbs of Intramuros. They called Puerta del Parian. Del Parian it's like it's it means like a, a merchandisers or merchants. In 1603, there's a lot of Chinese people who was massacred by the Spanish because they have a news that they want to have a revolt against them. So they massacred. 1636 and 1639. Because all of the all of the Chinese people who was living in the suburbs, it's not converted as a Catholics. Because if you are converted as a Catholics, you live in the other side at Binondo. So that is a Chinatown oldest Chinatown in the world is in the Philippines. So the establishment, there's a lot of uh, there's a dormitories, McDonald's, and Starbucks. Second oldest school on the left, that is the Colegio de San Juan de Letran, 1620. So there's a lot of bullet marks, bullet holes. Like bakas ng kahapon. they kept the walls during the war no steels or metals and also cements actually during Spanish period um, every major establishment is there's a tunnel a tunnel which is connected up to Port Santiago 
And also here on the right side, there's a lot of warehouses. And the last gate that they built is Puerta de Santa Ab, uh, Puerta de Isabel, 1861. left side the white building it was used to be as a church in 1588 they called Santo Domingo Church the church also destroyed so that's why they moved at Quezon Avenue now the building is used as a bank of the Philippine Island that under a construction building which was used to be as a custom house Central Bank Comelec was destroyed in 1979 they want to renovate as a national archive of the Philippines but they don't want to destroy the outside area the facade because they want to renovate it Bureau of Immigration and this part it was used to be as a port area here in Manila why they do the the trading what they call the galleon trade Manila to Acapulco galleon trade to build a bridge a bridge connected to Intramuros up to Binondo and that is Adolfo Lopez Mateos the president of Mexico who has stopped also the value trading here Building that is the site of the oldest university in Asia. In 1611, that it was built, what they called the University of Santo Tomas. we have a statue of the king of Spain King Philip II that's where the name of the Philippines came from Philip Philippines
another government office on the left side. That's a Bureau of Internal Revenue, the BIR, or where you can pay your taxes. small plaza ah, this is a plaza they call plaza Santo Tomas why they call the plaza Santo Tomas? because they found the statue of the founder of the oldest university in Asia the bronze statue that is Miguel de Le Benavides so there's a school and another school on the left side the pink building it's only for the female during the Spanish period the Colegio de Santa Rosa today it's co-ed now we're going to Bahay Chinoy and also Silais It looks, it looks like an old <laughs> Palacio del Sana is just only a passage. Inside is just only a warehouse. And on the other side is a Bahay Pinoy, Chinese Museum. So you can see also the artifacts of the Chinese back then. Ming Qing Yuan Song, that is the dynasty of Chinese. Center.
And now we're passing to the cobblestone. It's a bumpy road. It makes a pre massage. There's a bar, the local craft beer, the Batala Bar. Barbara's Restaurant. It's managed by the sister of Senator Richard Gordon. The Knights of Columbus on the left side. The NCCA. Culture and Arts. And the Red Cross on the right side. The Red Cross used to be at a school. Aleo de Santa Potenza. area on the left side, the Pacho Victoria. And this is the Silahis that it was used to be as a church. Lourdes Church. You can see a lot of antiques inside. This one is a souvenir shops. 